Hello everyone, and in today's video, you'll be learning about how you can use Xcode instruments to look at network traffic and find the bottlenecks and also to improve it. So I'm currently on developer.apple.com documentation for Xcode. And if you read the documentation here, they're saying that you can use the instruments, which is a tool, which is an app, uh, to profile and analyze your application, to improve performance, and also investigate system resource usage. So let's go ahead and see that, first of all, let's see our problem that we're trying to fix, and then can we fix it after we find out that this is a problem? How can we fix it? So here's my really simple application, and you can see that I am making a request to this URL. This is going to give me some sort of uh, vegetable data. We can take a look at it if you want. Let's go ahead and copy that. And if I simply paste it over here, you can see that it is going to give me all of this information about different vegetables. Each vegetable contains a thumbnail, which is basically an image. So if I click on this vegetable, you can see it's a thumbnail. All right. Okay. So what is going on is that in our application, in our Swift UI application, we are making a call, we are getting the vegetables, and we are using the async image, which is already part of Swift UI, to display the image or to load the image from the URL because each of these images have a URL, all right, as we have seen already. See that? Each of these images have a thumbnail URL. So using the async image, we're able to load that. Now, we want to see that does that affect performance when we're using async image or is the, are the images being cached? Meaning, are they just loaded the first time and they're not really loaded the next time because it's the same image? Now, in order to use instruments, it's always a good idea to start by first running your application on an actual phone, like a physical phone. So let me go ahead and run this on an actual device. As you can see, it's actually connected to my device, iPhone. And I'm going to show you using the QuickTime player. There we go. So this is my actual device, all right? And I can scroll up and scroll down and I can see that this is the application. I mean, it's nothing complicated. We're simply displaying the name of the vegetable along with their different images. Okay, so that's fine. But looking at this, we can't really see if there's any problem or not, or are there any bottlenecks or not. This is where instruments come in handy. I can go ahead and launch instruments just by pressing command space and searching for instruments. I mean, I'm sure there are many ways of launching it, but that's how I launch. And you can see over here, there are so many different things, so many different templates with instruments that you can use. Uh, you can find memory leaks, this one. You can use uh, it with Core ML. You can profile your CPU. You can even use it to profile your Swift UI application. But right now we're interested in network. So make sure that you select network. We'll choose it. And this is what it actually opens up. This is a in instruments interface. Now, in order to profile network traffic, you have to be connected to the real device. And that is why I am connected to the real device. I can go ahead and press this button. Now, this is kind of like the recording button. It's going to start, you can see, recording mode. So let me go ahead and click it. Now, if you don't see this button, make sure that you run the app on the device using Xcode, like using this just one time so that it is installed. And let's go back to instrument and I'm gonna press this red button. It's gonna say recording HTTP traffic may expose sensitive and personal information recorded anyway, that's fine. And I also want to show you the other part, which is this one. All right, so this is the app on the right hand side. And on the left-hand side, we have our instruments, all right? And this is, by the way, the real device. See, this is the real device. So we're looking at the instrument, and as I scroll, 
Just watch at the HTTP traffic. Just watch right over here, this bar. I'm scrolling. See that? That spike that is coming up? Right there, we see a spike. I'm scrolling. So I'm basically scrolling down and looking at all the different vegetables. And when I scroll down, I can see these spikes coming up. See that? Another spike. And if I scroll up again, quickly, ooh, massive spike again. Wow, that's a big spike right there. See that? So it doesn't really matter if I'm scrolling down or I'm scrolling up. You can definitely see the spikes that are showing up. This means that this is a HTTP traffic that is showing up. All right, let's go ahead and press the pause button, which is this one. There we go. And look at these spikes. I mean, we have every time we scroll these network traffic, there is some heavy stuff going on over here. Even though we are scrolling up or scrolling down, it doesn't really matter. There is some heavy duty stuff going on over here. All right. So this gives us an indication that maybe the images are not really cached. Because if they were cached, then we shouldn't be seeing these heavy spikes. All right. Now, the good thing is that you can always select a spike. So I can just drag the spike and select this portion. And right over here in the bottom, you can see that you have Hello Instruments, you have Shared, and then here we go. You can see that where it is actually coming from and what it is actually loading. Look at that. Look at what it is actually loading. See that? All the vegetables is loading, right? So this is going to tell us that what exactly is being downloaded. I can even go a little bit further. I can click on whatever, Raspberry, and I can go over here. And I can see the backtrace also. Like, okay, we downloaded, we call up these functions methods. And I can also select the list HTTP transactions. And now if I select any of these transactions, I can even get to the response body and all those things. So I can look at what headers are being sent. I can look at the response headers and so on. All right. So all of these different things you can actually do if you want to. So we can definitely see that a lot of it stuff that we already downloaded is just getting downloaded again. And that is not good. And the reason it's not good is that these are vegetables you have already downloaded. So if you're scrolling down, scrolling up, or coming back again, launching the app again in a few hours or even a couple of days, these vegetables images don't really have to be downloaded again because you have already downloaded that, right? So every time you download this, it's going to give you a spike. All right. So now the question becomes, well, OK, we have encountered this problem using instruments. How can we fix it? Let me first go ahead and close this. I'm going to go ahead and try to see if I can stop it. And then I can just close this. OK, so how do we fix this problem? This means that this async image is actually not caching the images. All right. So if it's not caching the images, what can we do to resolve this issue? Well, there are a lot of different options you, you have. So there is something called Kingfisher, which is a iOS or I'll just type Swift UI. So Kingfisher is one of those libraries that can work with caching the images from the web. And the good thing is that you can easily use Kingfisher if you want to. Uh, you will have to read the documentation and you know you can see that they have their own KF image available and that will cache the image. But you can also do a lot of other stuff. You know, Kingfisher is a pretty very famous library. Another one that this library is is called Nuke, which is for iOS also. This is image loading system. Nuke. All right. And this does the same exact thing. If you see their documentation over here, load images from different sources and display them in your app, take advantage of powerful image processing capabilities and a robust caching system. So you can even use uh, Nuke over here. 
all right so how do we install nuke well you if you want to install nuke and i already have then you'll have to go to your app and let's see if we can actually get the url like this one and we will go to edge package dependencies and over here in the package dependencies you can see nuke is already coming up because that was kind of like the last thing i searched for but i wonder if i can just press yeah you can see there i can just write the url of nuke and it kind of comes up and once i go ahead and click on it uh, it will add the package all right so you can see that there's a button and i can add that package well the good thing is that i have already added the package nuke but if you want to use Kingfisher, you can definitely use Kingfisher if you want to, all right? So I've added Nuke as a package dependency. And what I want to do is I want to replace this with maybe something that is provided by the Nuke framework. The Nuke framework itself provides you with a similar control or a similar view that you can use with Swift UI, which has caching capabilities built in. Since I have already installed the package Nuke, uh, what I can do is I can start using it. So I'll go on the top and I'll import, and you can see that over here we have Nuke UI. So I'm just gonna import Nuke UI. And I need to replace all of this stuff, which is the async image. So instead of async image, Nuke provides lazy image. So we can actually use the lazy image. And you can see over here, lazy image does have a lot of different uh, overloads, a lot of different functions that we can use. You can use the content URL with the content URL with, you know, there's so many different ways that you can actually write that, all right? So let me see if I can, we can use vegetable dot thumbnail image, which is simply a URL. And over here, we'll get the image uh, let's see. Okay, this is state basically. So we're going to get the state. And from there, we can actually get the image. So image equals to state.image. There we go. And we will return this image. So we'll make it resizable. And then you can frame it to whatever width and height that you want. So I, I'm going to go ahead and frame it with width will be, let's say, 50. And height will be 52. 50. All right. Um, if there's a problem, if it's still loading, then if I say state dot, you know, if is loading, then we can display a progress view. So Nuke does provide you all of these different cool things that you can use. So I can go ahead over here, progress view can be anything. I'm just gonna say loading. And then I'm also going to kind of like put the frame over here. Else, well, if nothing is working, uh, then we can display some sort of a image indicating that we'll just use a placeholder image. So this is where we'll use placeholder image. All right, let me go ahead and build it. Now the first thing we should do is we should probably run the application just using Xcode and try to see how it looks. So let me go ahead and run this. And we're running it again on the real device. Okay, looks pretty good. I mean, if you are not happy with the frame width 50-50, you can always change that, right? Okay, so there we go. We're running. Hmm, all right. Now, let's go ahead and run it through instruments. I'm going to go to the instruments. There we go, instruments. Network is fine. And just press the recording button over here. Okay, and let's go ahead and see our quick time player. Okay, so this will be really interesting. All right, so here we go. We got our recording. Take a closer look at the HTTP traffic over here. I am going to start scrolling. Okay, we have some traffic going on. I mean, I guess it is downloading those images. Okay, that's fine. Now this time, hopefully all the images are being downloaded or at least most of the images have already been downloaded because I scroll at the bottom and you know there's no more left to scroll. Now I'm gonna scroll up. 
See that? How clean it is? The HTTP traffic. If I scroll down again, see, there's nothing going on now. It's completely blank. There's nothing going on now. See that? Pretty cool, right? I mean, look at how nice and clean it is. I mean, there is really nothing going on now. So this is how we have used Xcode instruments to, to find the network bottlenecks. And then we were like, okay, the async image, which is the built-in SIFUI view, it's not really, uh, you know, caching those things. So we replace it with Nuke. Now, you don't really have to use Nuke. You can use Kingfisher, or you can even create your own caching system. And maybe in the future videos, I will cover that how you can, you know, create your own caching system. So you're not really using any third party dependencies. All right. But uh, in this lecture, you have learned or in this video, you have learned how to use the Xcode instruments to find the network bottleneck. And then we found solutions in the term of third party solutions or third party packages. Uh, one favor I always uh, need to ask you is go ahead and try to make sure that you are talking about Azam Sharp School. If you like this video, go ahead and share it on social media. Now, this can be, you know, uh, x.com, Twitter, uh, Mastodon, Blue Sky, and LinkedIn also. I also do workshops, all right? So the workshop that is coming up is the Swift Data Workshop, which is on May 16th. So I'm hoping that you can join me with that. This is going to be a three hour workshop. So hopefully you can enjoy that also. And check out the courses. I mean, there are just so many courses. I just published this brand new course, which is deploying machine learning models using Vapor and Core ML. This is a brand new course that I just released. Uh, it's, it's a really great course, all right? So definitely check it out. And if you do have any questions, let me know. Thank you so much and uh, I'll, be hoping to see you in the next video.